Hello, everybody. In this video lecture, we uh, cover Chapter 5, the integumentary system. Chapter 5 will be divided into two video lectures. This is part 1. Integumentary system consists of your skin, cutaneous membrane, and accessory structures or accessory organs, such as hair, glands, and nails. Skin or integument consists of um, actually not three but two major groups. So I'm going to change it. Instead of three, I'm going to put two major groups because hypodermis is not technically part of skin. So integument consists of two major groups, epidermis, superficial region, and dermis, uh, deep region. Hypodermis or superficial fascia, subcutaneous tissue, this is a layer under dermis, and um, it mostly uh, adipose tissue. And as I already said, it's not technically part of skin, but it does share some functions with dermis. So this is diagram of uh, human skin. Please pause the video and uh, make sure you memorize all the structures and all these different parts and layers of epidermis and dermis. I'm just going to show you very quickly what you need to pay attention to. Um, the superficial layer is epidermis. Then we have dermis. Then we have hypodermis. That is mostly adipose tissue. Now, dermis has two layers, papillary and reticular layer. Uh, also, dermis, it has this um, dermal papillae, right? You can see over here, dermal papillae. Inside this dermal papillae, we have blood vessels, and they're called papillary loops. We also have another network of blood vessels, and it's cutaneous vascular plexus, located deep in uh, the dermis. Um, you see sweat gland, a duct of a sweat gland, and a pore. I see this muscle, and this is a pili muscle responsible for goosebumps. Here another type of gland, and this is sebaceous or oil gland. Uh, also, these yellow lines, those are sensory neurons. And um, this one has free nerve endings, and they're responsible for a sensation of pain and temperature. Now, this structure over here is called pacineal carpuscle or lamella carpuscle. And this is a sensory receptor for um, pressure and vibration. And also these nerve endings have follicle receptor and then sense a movement of the hair. So epidermis. Epidermis is made from epithelial tissue. It is keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. The major cells are keratinocytes. Uh, they produce fibrous protein keratin. About 10-25% of the cells in epidermis are melanocytes. They are located in the low epidermis and produce pigment melanin. We also have dendritic cells. Um, those are macrophages and tactile cells or touch receptors. Um, on this diagram, you can see four strata of the epidermis. Um, this is diagram of a thin skin. If we would have thick skin, so right here in this area between stratum granulosum and stratum corneum, we would have extra stratum that is called stratum lucidum. Please pause the video and read the description of this uh, strata. So stratum basale, this is the basal layer or the deepest epidermal layer. And we have um, uh, one row of stem cells that are um, metabolically active. They divide by mitosis. They also synthesize um, uh, lots of different proteins, major protein that is you know, keratin. Um, this layer also called stratum germinativum, and germinativum means cells that 
undergo rapid division. Journey from basal layer to surface of the skin all the way up to stratum corneum takes about 25-45 days or you can remember just about one month. Next layer is stratum spinosum and um, those are cells that became um, flattened and um, they full of the um, protein called pre-keratin. Pre-keratin filaments attached to desmosome and they also have abandoned melanin granules and dendritic cells in this stratum. Stratum granulosum, thin, three to five cell layers. Um, cells are flat and the major protein is keratina highline. It's a keratin with some sugar molecule attached to it and also lamellated granules and um, those are granules of um, fat. So we have accumulation of keratina highline and fat in the stratum granulosum. Stratum lucidum found only in thick skin. It's a thin uh, transparent sub, uh, band superficial to stratum granulosum. A few row of flat dead keratinocytes. Actually, keratinocytes start dying already in the stratum spinosum. So when we move to stratum granulosum, lucidum and corneum, all those keratinocytes are dead cells. So stratum corneum, the most superficial uh, stratum of epidermis, 20, 30 rows of dead, flat, keratinized membranous sac. It's about three quarter of epidermal thickness and function in protection from abrasion and penetration. It gives your skin waterproof uh, qualities and it's also biological barrier, barrier against chemical and physical assaults to your skin. Now we're moving deeper. We are in dermis. Dermis is connective tissue. It's strong and flexible. Uh, major cells are fibroblasts, but we also have macrophages, mast cells, and white blood cells. Dermis has two layers, papillary layer and reticular layer. So we're back to the same diagram so you guys can see uh, two layers of the dermis papillary layer and a reticular layer. So papillary layer is made of areola connective tissue with collagen, elastic fibers and blood vessels. Um, in the papillary layer we have dermal papillae that contains papillary loops, Meissner corpuscles and free nerve endings. I just want to remind you that Meissner corpuscles uh, for touch and free nerve entry, uh, ending, um, ending of sensory uh, neurons and they're responsible for sensation of temperature and pain. Deep to papillary layer we have reticula layer and reticula is made from dense irregular connective tissue so papillary is areolar connective tissue and reticular layer is dense regular connective tissue. It's 80% of the thickness of dermis um, and we have collagen fibers and elastic fibers and collagen for strength and elastic for uh, stretch and recoil properties. Skin markings. Uh, friction ridges. Friction ridges, this is what we call fingerprints. And those are epidermal ridges that lie atop of deep dermal papillary regions. And this gives us our unique um, pattern of the fingerprints. Cleavage lines. When we talk about collagen in your uh, dermis, the collagen fibers, they arrange in the bundles. And those bundles are form the lines of tension or cleavage lines. Um, also, another uh, skin marking is the flexure lines of your hand and also um, in your soul. Uh, importance of these cleavage lines is that when we have incision, 
Incision would heal way better if it's done parallel to the cleavage lines. So if we have incision over here that runs parallel, it will heal better compared with the one that, let's say, runs perpendicular to the cleavage lines. Because you cut through um, collagen fibers, you cut through proteins, and um, that would be you know, pretty hard to um, restore the uh, integrity of the skin. So this might be replaced by lots of scar tissue um, instead of nice uh, healing. Skin color. Um, three pigments contribute to skin color. Melanin. Um, there are different types of melanin. Melanin varies from yellow to reddish brown to black uh, color. Melanin is produced by melanocytes, but then this melanin migrates to keratinocytes. Um, it's believed that the pigment shields the nucleus and protects it from UV radiation. So freckles and moles are local accumulation of melanin. Another color contributes to your, another pigment, apologize, that contributes to your skin color is keratin. Keratin is yellow to orange, most obvious in the pulse and soles, and your body does not synthesize keratin, so it comes strictly from your diet. And last pigment is hemoglobin, uh, responsible for pinkish, of skin. Appendages of the skin. Appendages of the skin are derivatives of the epidermis and they include sweat glands, oil glands, hair and hair follicles and nails. We have two main types of sweat glands. Another name for sweat glands is sudoriferous glands. So we have merocrine sweat glands. Uh, Merocrine sweat glands have a specific name. We call them ecrine. They abandoned, uh, especially on your palms, soles, and forehead, and they produce um, sweat. Sweat is 99% water. It also contains sodium chloride, vitamin C, antibodies, and some metabolic waste. Um, because we're talking about exocrine glands, they have ducts, and ducts connect to pores and secretion to the surface, uh, surface, surface, surface of your uh, skin. Uh, function of sweat glands, ecrine sweat glands in thermoregulation. So this is a photomicrograph of a um, sweat gland. It's an ecrine gland, and you can see the uh, secretory units right here. Right? And this is simple cuboidal epithelium. Another type of uh, sweat glands are apocrine sweat glands, and then they are confined to axillary and anogenital area, and they secrete sebum. Sebum is sweat and some fatty substances plus proteins. They also secrete through the duct, and they secrete two hair follicles. Um, functional from puberty onwards, um, so they're not very, uh, um, very active before puberty. And um, we do have some specialized apocrine glands. Some of them are well known, your memory glands. Another glands um, that secretes cerumen, ceruminous glands found in external ear canal. So uh, both over here, ceruminous and memory glands, they are modified apocrine sweat glands. Oil glands. Oil glands, um, another name is sebaceous glands. They widely distributed, uh, develop from hair follicles, become active at puberty and secrete sebum, that is oily holocrine secretion. They protect you from bacteria and also make your uh, skin and hair soft or softer. Uh, this is for the micrograph of the sebaceous gland. So here's the gland and uh, this is a hair follicle. And those are secretory cells. Do not confuse these cells with uh, adipose tissue because glands are epithelial tissue. They might look 
a little bit similar, but it's completely different type of tissue. So um, secretory cells in apocrine sweat glands, um, epithelial cells. Hair. Function of your hair is to alert you about the presence of insect on the skin and also protect your scalp against physical trauma, heat loss, and sunlight. Hair is distributed through your body uh, with some exceptions. You do not have hair on your palms, soles, lips, nipples, and some portion of external genitalia. Hair consists of dead keratinized cells, contains hard keratin, more durable than soft keratin of skin, and we do have hair pigments, uh, melanins, yellow, rust brown, black. Gray or white hair uh, has decreased uh, amount of melanin because of decreased um, activity of melanocytes. Also, gray and white hair has increased air bubbles in shaft. Types of hair. Velus is pale, fine body hair found uh, on children and uh, adult females. Terminal hair are coarse, long. It's a hair of your eyebrows, your scalp, your axillary and pubic region, and also facial hair of males. Hair grows. Um, Hair goes through uh, three major phases, and anagen right here, catagen, and telogen. Anagen is a growth phase from weeks to years, and it's followed by a regressive stage and then resting phase that lasts about one to three months. The length of growth phase varies from 16 years in your scalp to three, four months in the eyebrows. Alopecia. Alopecia is hair thinning in both sexes after age 40. It's not the same as a baldness. True or frank baldness is genetically determined and sex influence condition. And it caused by a response of the follicles, hair follicles to DHT, that is dihydrotestosterone. Structure of nail. Nail is scale-like modification of epidermis on the distal dorsal surface of fingers and toes. Um, nail biting is called um, anica phagia. Phagia means like macrophage. You pretty much eat something. And in this situation, anica phagia is a biting of nail. Uh, on this diagram, you see the major parts of a human nail. You see the body of the nail. So here's the body. We have free age. We have lunule. Lunule is the white part on the proximal side of, um, of the nail. Um, we also have hypanuchium. That's a cortical and hypanuchium. This is a part of the skin that attached to the ventral part of the nail. Um, body of the nail resting on a nail bed. Then we have a root of the nail over here and matrix. And in this nail matrix, you will find keratinocytes that actually synthesize and secrete this keratin that make your nail. <clears throat> 